Come on. There we go. Okay. Um, so, first thing, late work. Uh, in terms of practice work, today is technically the last day for practice work, although it's kind of being extended to tomorrow morning, and so I'll explain that along with it. Uh, today I'll be giving you guys a Google form with space for you to tell me which assignments you've completed that you would like me to check. Um, if it's filled in by the time I check it tomorrow morning, probably around 8 a.m., I will count those assignments for you. You can fill this Google form out as many times as you would like to throughout the evening. Um, and, you know, so if you do an assignment and you want to make sure it gets counted, uh, but then you go back and decide to do some more, you can turn it in multiple times if you like. Uh, you also still have the option to email me. So if your email is in my inbox when I check it tomorrow morning, I will count it. Um, then the last day to complete late quizzes is Thursday morning, 8 a.m. So if you need a quiz to be um, reassigned to you, that was mostly for the geometry class since they do all their quizzes and big ideas online. Um, let's see, let me know. Also, if you could let me know when you complete a late quiz via email, that would be great so that I know to go and check it for you. Um, because sometimes I get uh, a message from Google saying people turned it in and sometimes I don't. And so. Uh, if you could let me know you turned it in, that's a surefire way to get it graded. Um, and again, there's only a couple of you that are still missing quizzes. Um, the rest of you that uh, would like to improve your grade from quiz-like material um, can work with retakes here. 3-1 to 3-3, three, three, I just got finished grading all of those. Um, so everyone that turned theirs in as of like 12.30, it's been graded. Um, so if you would like a retake, correct the problems you missed, find problems similar to each one that you missed, do for practice, send me a picture of your corrections uh, or a Google Doc. You have until this Thursday to submit your corrections. And for this one, since we are so close to the end of the quarter here, you also must complete the retake by the end of the day Thursday. Um, so, I'm not going to be assigning crazy amounts of work between now and then either, and you also have the day off on Wednesday that you can use to work on corrections and things like that. Um, if you do have uh, corrections to complete and you would like some help with those, I'm available for office hours Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 8 to 8.30, or uh, send me an email and we can find a different time to meet if that does not work for you. Um, let's see. Any questions at this point about retakes and late work? Any questions about retakes and late work? Okay. If you do have questions, uh, either continue typing in the chat if you're working on typing a question or uh, unmute and say something. Besides that, we're going to go ahead and kind of talk about the schedule for the week real quick. Uh, for pre-calculus, this is our schedule. Uh, we're going to be working on 3.4 uh, and 3.5 a little bit. That's going to be kind of Thursday, Friday, modeling with nonlinear regression. That kind of thing is 3.5. Um, 3.4 is all about solving exponential and logarithmic equations, so we're going to spend some time on that. We are not going to take any more quizzes, though. Um, Friday was our final quiz, um, and so then we've got all of our reminders on last days to do things. Uh, and then today and tomorrow is also picture day. We have last names A through L and last names M through Z. So make sure you come to picture day um, because that's how you'll be included in the yearbook. Um, and that's also how you'll be, um, how you'll get your school ID. And it's also an opportunity to pick up any textbooks that you'll need for second quarter and uh, pick up your schedule, things like that. Um, also, you can purchase a yearbook at this picture day for $25. So uh, if you would like to purchase a yearbook, bring $25. Um, let's see the question. Are you accepting late practice work until the end of the day today? Yes, actually until tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Uh, you can... Um, There'll be a Google form that you could submit uh, your late assignments 
with, or you can still email me. Um, are you dropping off textbooks? I think you can keep your textbooks, especially if you're planning on continuing on to the second semester of pre-calculus later on this year. I would just go ahead and keep the textbook. Um, yeah, so I wouldn't worry about dropping off any textbooks, especially um, I think they said they went ahead and told us um, that for any class you don't really need to drop off your textbook unless you um, aren't using it at all the rest of the week because we still do have a couple days of class. Uh, the times are all based on your last name. So if you go to the Auburn Riverside website, um, the first thing that pops up down here is all of the different times and all the different last name letters. So find out where you fall within these and then those are the hour that you're supposed to show up during. And you are supposed to go to the gym to start off with. So uh, you enter through the gym and then you go to the commons and then you go to either the library or you can leave if you don't need to get any books. And they will tell you on your schedule, they'll like highlight a class if it has a book that you need to pick up. Uh, also, for any of you that are freshmen, there's still uh, Chromebook swap out if you haven't swapped yours out yet, um, which I think you have. Uh, Asher's the only one anyway. Um, and then there's also Chromebook repair. So any of you, if your Chromebook is broken, bring it with you, get it fixed. Uh, also, if you, you pre-ordered a Spirit shirt or a Spirit face mask, those are also available to be picked up. So lots of things happening today, uh, lots of things happening tomorrow. Make sure you come at your assigned time slot. If you can't come at your assigned time slot, I would uh, probably give a call down to the school and ask uh, what you should do about that. Any questions, comments, concerns about the schedule, about picture day, about anything so far? And again, if you do have any questions, feel free to uh, say something. Otherwise, let's see, we've talked about late work, we've talked about retakes. Okay, 3.4 day one is where we are headed next. Um, we are talking about exponential equations today, solving those using logarithms. We have one IXL section that goes with what we're gonna talk about today. and. Um, let's see, it's in the IXL section tends to cover the simpler of the problems. So I will show a couple of the considerably more difficult problems, um, but you won't see those as much and won't, most of the time will not be expected to solve, uh, equations like those, but they're good, to, good ones to see, you know, how complicated something can get and, uh, for those of you that like an extra challenge, uh, we'll have that. So 3.4 day one, exponential equations. Oops, and there we go. Now we can actually see it. Okay, so when we're solving exponential equations, there's generally a couple different ways that you can solve it. Um, so I'm gonna go through a couple of examples where I show you a couple different ways of solving it. There's a way that works for it every time and there's a way that works for it only sometimes uh, if you're dealing with nice numbers. So um, I'll show you them all and then you guys can decide which way works best for you. So, first one. Our exponential equation is going to be 4 to the x minus 1 power equals 16. This one you could almost solve, or you probably could solve by guessing and checking, especially if you know your squares um, 
And there's going to be a lot of them like this that you could solve if you know your squares or you know your cubes fairly well. Um, this is one of those ones that we all know that 4 squared equals 16, or at least hopefully we know that 4 squared equals 16. So <clears throat> this one is one that you could kind of uh, guess and check your way through. And so method A is going to be... Um, I'm going to call it the rewrite the base method, but it's also kind of the guess and check when you have nice numbers method. So 4 to the x minus 1 is equal to 16. 16 is 4 squared. So I'm rewriting 16 as 4 squared. Well, from there, we know that x minus 1 must be equal to 2. So then we add 1 to both sides. And we get x equals 3. Okay, so again, this case or this method really works well if you have something that you can easily recognize as being a square or a cube or something like that of whatever the base is on the other side. It's a really useless method if it was like 4 to the x minus 1 equals 17. Because I don't know what power of 4 17 is. So... It's a useful method if you can recognize that. The second method that we're going to do is where you log base 4 both sides. So by putting a log base 4 on both sides, I'm effectively getting rid of the, um, the 4 in the base here. So this is kind of a way, or this is... Um, a method that involves uh, kind of switching things from exponential into logarithmic form, uh, which is also something that will work here. So we start off with 4 to the x minus 1 equals 16. I'm going to leave a little space there. And then we will log base 4 both sides. Because log base 4 of 4 cancels that out, and we're left with just x minus 1 on this side. And log base 4 of 16 is something that you can type into a calculator. And log base 4 of 16 is 2. So then we're just left with x minus 1 equals 2. Add 1 to both sides, and we get x equals 3. Okay. So that's a method that'll work anytime. Obviously, you wouldn't want to log base 4 both sides if the base was 7 or something like that. You would log base 7 both sides. Um, but that's another thing that will work. And then the third method I'm going to show... Um, involves natural logging both sides, and it does involve a little bit of extra work to natural log both sides, but sometimes that's what you're going to want to do just to bring down an exponent. That's kind of the general um, way that's typically taught anyway um, when we're solving exponential equations is to natural log both sides. So if I have 4 to the x minus 1 equals 16, I can natural log both sides. And here's what that does. Now that I have natural log of 4 to the x minus 1 equals natural log of 16, we can kind of reverse engineer that power rule. So remember we had, um, if we had something like 3 natural log of x, that's the same as natural log of x to the third. Well, you can also use that to bring a power down. 
So logging or natural logging things is often what we use in order to remove something from an exponent when we're solving equations. So we can rewrite this as x minus 1, but make sure you put it in parentheses. Natural log of 4 equals natural log of 16. And now I'm just solving for x in this. So I'm going to divide on both sides by natural log of 4. We get x minus 1 equals natural log of 16 over natural log of 4. Then we add 1 to both sides. And natural log of 16 over natural log of 4 is something that you can type into a calculator. Actually, the whole thing is. You could type in natural log of 16 over natural log of 4 plus 1 into the calculator, and it would give you 3. Or if you just type this part in, it would give you 2, and then plus 1 equals 3. Okay. So these are three separate methods that you can use to solve this same equation. These are going to be the two that you want to grab the most often. This is the one that only works again if you're dealing with really nice numbers. So it's going to be one that you use a lot less often. But it's one that works, um, again, if you're good at uh, recognizing squares and cubes and things like that. Okay. Any questions off of the first example? Okay. So the rest of the ones that I show, we're not going to use this method because we're not going to be working with numbers that are very nice. Or they won't be as, or the answers that we're going to get are going to be decimals, basically. So for the second example, we're going to go 3 to the x plus 10 equals, uh, actually not plus 10, just kidding. Um, or actually, we'll do plus 10, but we'll equal... Uh, excuse me, uh, will equal 39. Okay, so when you're working with one like this, before you start with logging things and all of that, uh, what we would want to do is move everything that doesn't have an exponent in it onto the other side. So for this one, there's just going to be that one small step first. Um, because if I were to log this, or natural log it, or anything like that, I couldn't bring the x down because 10 is not to the x power, as, or this whole thing inside is not to the x power as well. Um, so, general rule of thumb. Uh, move all but the exponent to the other side. First. So instead, we're going to subtract 10 from both sides and get 3 to the x equals 29 for our problem that we're going to solve. Okay, so then, if 3 to the x equals 29, um, we have kind of our two options over here. We could log base 3 both sides since the base is 3, or we could natural log both sides. It doesn't really matter which one you do. I'll show both. This will probably be the last one that I show multiple methods on. we could log base 3 both sides. So instead of 3 to the x equals 29, 
we would have log base 3 of 3 to the x equals log base 3 of 29. So this is kind of the changing it from exponential form into logarithmic form because we can cancel out that log base 3 and get x equals log base 3 of 29, which is something that we can type into a calculator. So I would, I would go over to Desmos. And type in log base 3 of 29. And we get 3.065. And on all of these where we have to round, I would round to three decimal places, um, mainly because that's what you're going to want. It kind of mitigates rounding error if you use it later in a problem, or at least it mitigates it to some degree. And then also, that's what you're going to be expected to do in AP Calculus next year. So uh, in AP Calc, they expect you to round to three decimal places. So that's what we are going to do. So 3.065 would be our answer. OK. And the second method was to natural log both sides. So if we add 3 to the x equals 29, to bring down the exponent, we can natural log both sides, because now we get x natural log of 3 equals natural log of 29. Divide by natural log 3 on both sides, and we get x equals natural log of 29 over natural log of 3. And if you type that into a calculator, you get the same exact thing as we get over here, 3.065. So again, either way that you want to do it is fine. Um, there's not really one better way. This way is shorter. But this way works with more types of equations, like you'll see in the next example that we do. But before we do another example, I want you guys to try one. So I'll give you one of the simpler ones like we've been doing. And you get to give it a go. You can choose whichever method you like. It does not matter to me. But for the you try, we're going to do five to the two X equals forty three. Okay. So go ahead and give this one a try. You can use either method. It doesn't matter which one you use. But give it a go. When you think you're done, um, type I love exponentials into the chat.
All right, we got a lot of fans of exponentials in this class. Uh, if you log based five both sides, this is kind of the route you take. You divide by two afterwards, and then type this whole thing into a calculator. If you natural logged both, you're on the right track if this is what you did. And if you got 1.168 for your answer, you are correct. So um, for this one, you would log base 5 both sides. Then you'd be left with 2x equals log base 5 of 43. Then you divide by 2 on both sides to get your answer. If you natural log both, you would bring that down the 2x. So you'd have 2x natural log 5 equals natural log of 43. Then you divide by 2 and by natural log of 5 on both sides to get x is 1.168 when you type this thing into the calculator. Doesn't matter which way you do it, you should get the same answer for both. Okay, so the last couple of examples I'm going to show you um, are going to be ones that are a little bit harder. Um, they're ones that you won't see nearly as often, but they're good to be familiar with or to at least have seen before. So example number three is going to be e to the x plus 2 equals 10 to the 2x. Okay. So on this one, we see that we have two different exponentials that we're equating, and we need to uh, figure out how to solve this. So... Um, this one will end up looking a little bit messier. Um, when you see one like this, you could, since the base is E here, you could natural log both sides. Since the base is 10 here, you could log base 10 both sides. It doesn't really matter which one you start with. I'm going to go with natural log because um, one, it tends to, natural logs tend to be used more often than logs of other bases, and then also um, it brings the x plus 2, the more complicated term, out of the exponent, which um, I like better. So we're going to natural log both sides. <clears throat> so natural log cancels out the e, and we are just left with x plus 2 on this side of the equation. Over here, we can take advantage of that product property, or uh, sorry, power property, and bring that out in front. So we get 2x natural log of 10. Okay. From here, our goal now is to try to factor out an x. And to be able to do that, I need to move all the terms with x in them onto one side. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So we get 2 equals 2x natural log of 10 minus x, because now these both have an x involved. So I can factor that out. That's my greatest common factor between these two terms. So if I factor out an x, we get x times 2 natural log of 10 minus 1. OK. And keep in mind that 2 natural log of 10 is a number. I can type this into a calculator and get a number out of it. So when it comes to solving it in the end, um, what I can do here is divide on both sides. Like, let's pretend that we have an equation like this instead. 2 equals x times 4. Well, if that was the case, I would just divide by 4 on both sides, right? 
So likewise here, we're going to divide by 2 natural log of 10 minus 1 on both sides. And then this is going to go into the calculator. So in Desmos, we would type 2 divided by 2 natural log of 10 minus, or, oops, minus 1, which gives us 0.555 if we round to three decimal places. So that would be our answer, 0 0.555. Okay, so that's how you handle an exponential on both sides. You can log with the base of either exponent, or you could just natural log both sides, and then, you know, it'll be a little bit more um, work to move things around, uh, unless one of the bases is E, of course, which makes it a little easier to move things around. Anyway. That's going to be one of the harder cases, and one of the, uh, of the harder cases, this is going to be the one that's more often used and seen. The last one I'll show you is a, hard, a harder case that you will rarely see, um, or at least you'll rarely see it as an equation. When you get to calculus um, and you're talking about integrals, which is like second semester of Calc 1 or AP Calculus, um, you'll see something similar to this called U substitution. Um, but that's it'll be a while before you get to that point. So if you don't understand what I do right here, right now, it's okay. Uh, you will come to an understanding of this at some point in your mathematical career if you continue on from here. And if you do get it right away, great. So last example, we're going to have e to the 2x minus uh, 3e to the x plus 2 equals 0. Okay. So this almost looks like something we could factor as a quadratic. We have something squared minus something plus something. Uh, equals zero, right? This kind of looks like something that we might factor. And that's where we're headed with this. We're looking for a way that we can substitute something in that we could factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that there's this number u, and I'm going to say u is equal to e to the x. Because then I can replace e to the x right here with u. And it just so happens that u squared is e to the x squared. And when you have uh, an exponent to an exponent, you multiply them. So that is the same as e to the 2x, which is exactly what we have right here. So this is u squared, and this part of this term is u. So we end up with u squared minus 3u plus 2 equals 0. And this looks like something that we can factor. Just so happens we can factor this into u minus 2 times u minus 1. So then this gives us u equals 2. This gives us u equals 1. But I can't just leave it as u because I needed, um, I want x, right? I want to solve for x. So now we have to back substitute. We know that u was equal to e to the x, so I'm going to put e to the x now is equal to 2, and e to the x is equal to 1. So then I would solve each of these exponentials independently. 
So I would natural log both sides here to get rid of the E. And we would just get X equals natural log of two. Here I would do the same thing. X equals natural log of one. Uh, natural log of two in the calculator is approximately 0 0.692. Natural log of one is zero. So those are our two solutions. Okay. So if you enjoyed that example, great. If you didn't enjoy it and got lost somewhere along the way, that's okay. Um, we're not going to see ones like that on our homework. Um, and you won't see much that looks a lot like this until um, we'll get into a little bit of the factoring with this kind of stuff. Uh, in the spring, um, but then in calculus, you'll really start using things like U substitution like this on a more regular basis, second semester from Calc 2. The two and the one, good question. Um, so this is just from where we set the U minus two equal to zero and the U minus one equal to zero. So like if I had factored these with X's and stuff like that, um, and then you set the individual pieces equal to zero. Um, or more broadly, where I got the two and the one from was just from factoring this. So, you know, things that multiply to two and add to negative three would be negative two and negative one. And then we'd go u minus two equals zero, u minus one equals zero. Add two, add one. Okay, so again, most of our uh, questions on our homework will be the, the type that you guys tried on the you try problem. Um, let's see. So on a scale of one to five, real quick, type in the chat. One, I'm totally lost. Uh, the you try problem threw me for a loop. Five being, give me the homework assignment now, I'm ready to go. What are we feeling? Okay, so looks like our negative one. Uh, looks like a majority of us have fours and fives and things like that. So for those of you that do have a four or a five, like you're feeling, you know, three, four, five, somewhere in there, I'll post the assignment for you guys to go ahead and get started. Um, if anyone wants more examples or would like to talk through a couple more problems, um, please stick around and we can totally do that. So if you're completely lost, please stick around. I'm also going to post the uh, exit ticket and the uh, missing assignments form in a little bit. But first, we'll look at the IXL real quick. Yeah, so for those of you who would like to stick around, you can. If you're uh, good to go, you're free to start working on the IXL. This first one, we'll just kind of go through a couple of the IXL type problems for those of you who would like more examples. The first one says three equals five to the X. So let's do that one. Three equals five to the X. Okay. So for this problem, what I personally would do on both sides, since five is my base of my exponent, I would log base five on both sides. So we would get log base five of three equals log base five of five to the X. Okay. And the reason we did that is the log base five of five cancels the five out. So we are left with X only on this side equals log base five of three. And then this is something that we can type into the calculator. So when we go over to the calculator, 
we type in log base five of three. And this is our answer. And on IXL, they want you to round to the nearest thousandth, which is uh, three decimal places, just like we were doing in class. So we just take 0 0.683, and that is our answer. All right, is it making a little bit more sense? Looks like it might be. Um, okay. We'll do one more. Make sure we've got it. E to the X equals seven. So on this one, since our base is E, the base of a natural log is E. So I'm gonna natural log both sides for this one. LN of E to the X equals LN of seven. Then the LN cancels out the E. So into the calculator, we would just type LN of seven. And that would be our answer. So 1.946. Okay, so that's how most of these problems are going to go. Ones like this that look a little more complicated are the same process to start. On this one, you would natural log both sides and you would get then 2x minus 2 equals natural log of 3. But natural log of 3 is just a number. So then you would add two to both sides and divide by two on both sides and the same thing would happen. Um, I guess I'll show this one really quick as well since it's a little bit different than the ones we've been doing. So on this one, we would start the process off the same. Natural log on both sides. to get 2x minus 2 equals natural log of 3. Remember, this is a number, so we're just going to treat it like a number. So we would add 2 on both sides. We get 2x equals natural log of 3 plus 2. And then we divide by 2 on both sides. And then this is something that I can type into the calculator since whatever we get is not going to be a real nice number. So we put, put LN of 3. Um, And then uh, divide it by 2. Make sure that it's all divided by 2. So include some parentheses there. Otherwise, it'll only divide the 2 by 2. Um, but you get negative 0.451. Oh, did I? I subtracted 2 instead of adding 2 in the calculator. So when you transfer it over from your paper, make sure you correctly transfer it over, 1.549. So yeah, anyways, uh, we wrote down natural log of 3 plus 2 divided by 2. But that doesn't count if you typed it into your calculator incorrectly. Anyway, so that's what we should have gotten. Uh, any more examples or types of examples that we want to see? Or are there any other questions that we have um, that are pertaining to other things?